Okay, so straight out, I'm gonna say I'm personally a real fan of this bike. In fact, last year when uh, I was really having a toss up between which bikes I was gonna get, this was um, probably number two uh, in the list actually. I'm a real fan of it. However, the Chav within uh, won out and I ended up getting the GSX-R 750 instead. So we've been shooting uh, pictures and video with this bike over the last uh, couple of weeks in quite a lot of different scenarios as well. And probably one of the reasons why we did choose this for our um, 2019 collection is because it's such a beautiful bike. And I think everybody that sees this bike, whether that's bystanders or family members or people from work that have seen it, absolutely love the look of it and uh, you know me too now this particular model is the pure version of the r9t range so it's the most stripped back version of the r9t that bmw have so this is the sport version of the r9t pure and on it you get a few extras actually included um, heated grips you get led indicators you get you get a chrome exhaust and these absolutely beautiful 17 inch spoked wheels which in my opinion just really make the, the, the bikes look so much better. They're really, really nice. And to be honest, I really think that the sport package available on the R90 Pure is really, really worth the money. Um, it's only basically another 700 pound upgrade. And I think that's, that's you know, you're getting way more than your money's worth if you go for the sport version of the Pure. So this particular model loaned to us from uh, BMW UK also has some trick parts on from the Special uh, catalog, including some of the cylinder covers on the front. It's got different uh, pegs, different um, rear set on it. Uh, it's got different levers um, and different master cylinder cover as well. So some really, really nice finishings on it, I have to say. Um, and you know they're beautifully well made, beautifully CNC'd, and you know they really add to the styling of this bike. So this is, I suppose, BMW's way of showing that you can customise your Pure bike, and you know, of course, they're going to have it on the press bike. The RRP for the R9T Pure Sport is ten thousand nine hundred and thirty pounds, including all of the extras that BMW have put on it. We are looking at. 13,225 pounds, including those extra parts from the Special uh, catalog. Now, that's 2,300 quid added to the price of the bike. And yeah, I think these are a really nice addition to this particular model. However, if it was me personally, and this was my bike, I'd probably scrap some of that, being honest. And But what I would do is I would change the color of the bike. BMW have just brought out this beautiful i think it's uh, part 719 beautiful black and gold colorway on the tank and some of the parts of the fairing and i've seen it at various shows and honestly in the flesh it looks absolutely beautiful now in terms of what i would do is customizing that would be the first check in my box okay so in terms of the way it rides now firstly we talk about the engine so this is bmw's classic 1170 cc boxer twin it's air cooled it sort of takes you back to um, i suppose that heritage motorcycling which is what the pure is actually all about and you know what it's a fantastic engine you get that lovely boxer wobble when you turn it on and when you um, flip the throttle it's a lovely feeling um, in terms of power this is 110 horsepower it's uh, 116 newton meters of torque which in uh, old money is 85 foot pound of torque so for the type of bike it is i don't think you're ever really going to um, need or want more power you know it's a really nice engine loads of fun actually the engine is just fantastic to uh, hoon about on you know it really fits the type of bike that this is obviously the boxer twin uh, the type of engine that it is, it, it, it just means that there's loads of torque available, you know, from right bottom low in pretty much every gear, to be honest. So loads of torque available. And actually, as you rev it and you, you know, you take it right up the rev range, you know, there's, there's loads of power there. And it's actually, do you know what? It's pretty linear. Um, really like the way this, 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 uh, this engine behaves and it probably encourages you to do more. Now, in terms of the suspension, the suspension is, again, is really nice. It's actually quite soft, um, which adds to the uh, comfort. You know, it's a really comfortable bike to ride. The seat is nice and comfortable. 
um, but it's not like wallowy in the corners or anything it's actually quite confidence inspiring so you know when you do get out there and start pushing it it rides really well it, it inspires you in the corners it doesn't you know bounce around too much I think everybody that buys this bike um, with the type of bike in mind that it is, I think it's not going to be disappointed. It rides really well through the corners, it handles really well. It's also incredibly nimble. I found this bike, and while it is a little bit heavier, and we'll talk about that um, in some more detail, this is an incredibly nimble bike. Um, I found the turning circle like really helpful. So if you're in a city or a town and you've got to do some sort of tight corners or, uh, or tight turns, I should say, or you're in a parking lot or something like that, this has probably got one of the best turning circles that I've ridden on a uh, new motorcycle uh, recently anyway. It's really fantastic. Uh, in terms of the brakes, in my opinion, they're absolutely brilliant. Now every BMW that I ride, I always think, God, they've got the brakes sorted and this is absolutely no exception. So we've got four piston uh, radial Brembo brakes on 320 mil dual disc brakes. And do you know what? The stopping power on this bike is really, really fantastic. Loads of power. Um, it's quite progressive as well. And again, you know, like the handling, it's really confidence inspiring. Onto the size and the weight. Now, it's no secret that the R90 she's got a bit of junk in her trunk you know she's a wide lady she really is and um, you know obviously you see that when you see it at shows and, and so on and so forth but practically speaking you know getting like uh, two bikes in a van like we've been trying to do over the last couple of weeks they're not going to go side by side because the cylinders are so wide um, you know like for me I've got a little gate that goes into my house um, where I store my motorbike and you know the R90 took one look at it and was like no she ain't going in there because um, she's you know it is a wide bike so practically speaking you've just got to sort of bear that in mind it's not going to stop you filtering it's not going to stop you doing anything else but you know if you've got little quirks with where you live or whatever or you've got to stick two bikes in a van next to each other it's probably not going to work out quite as you'd imagined. I would say she's also reasonably heavy um, this bike is 220 kilos when it's fully fueled which is not, it's not over heavy, but it's certainly not light either. But the beauty is with this particular model, and um, Rick also said this when he was, when he was riding it, and he's, he's shot quite a lot of movies with this particular bike, is all the weight seems to be very low. The, the center of gravity is very low. So you never actually feel that it's heavy. It feels quite lightweight. It feels really lightweight to, to maneuver around if you're turning around in the road or anything like that. Um, yeah, you never feel that way. It's really confidence inspiring. And with that in mind as well, I'd also really, really recommend it to uh, people who are perhaps shorter or lady riders who are wanting a bigger bike as well. You, you know, it's quite easy to, to maneuver. The seat's nice and low. You're not gonna feel like it's too top heavy, basically. So yeah, I think that's gonna work for um, shorter riders and lady riders too. So the R90 has been around for about four or five years now. Uh, and obviously when it was launched, there was quite a few people putting it against different bikes. We ourselves were included in a test where we um, put it against the Triumph uh, Thruxton R. And, you know, obviously there's been a few uh, newer releases into that marketplace um, for a bike that's relatively similar, something like a Z900 RS. Obviously that came out last year. Um, you've got the new Triumph Speed Twin that's just come out. Um, you could even chuck into there the Indian FTR 1200 and I think they're going to be some of the bikes that people might look at um, when they're considering a bike like this. Personally, I think this is still um, fantastic and I still think it's an absolutely fantastic choice if you're looking for a heritage, great looking uh, roadster type machine. I think this is 100% is going to stand up in terms of the competition. I think certainly it's going to stand up if you're looking to customise because there's so many options now available for this R90. You can really, really make it your own and I think make it a really special machine too. Obviously as a part of doing this test and riding these bikes, we're testing all of the Knox gear. I myself, I've been using the brand new Urban Pro shirt and it's been absolutely fantastic. Obviously we're still in February so I'm wearing a Cold Killers product underneath it just to uh, stop the wind chill but itself has been absolutely 
fantastic. I'm going to put in the link in the description so you can check out that individual product and the product video. Um, really, really fantastic product. And also I've been using the brand new Handroid pods, which are just phenomenal and really go with this type of looking machine. I suppose the only niggle that I've got with this bike is that sometimes well, quite often actually, when you're uh, starting off and you're in neutral and you're trying to find first gear, it really seems to struggle to locate that first gear. And also from first, finding neutral as well. It just doesn't want to do it basically. Um, and that's not necessarily a problem. I think you can get used to it. You just sort of have to like um, come off the, uh, off the clutch and then back on it again. But it's just a bit of a pain if you're trying to get away or if you're trying to shoot or film a sequence and you need the rider to be really smooth. It just doesn't work out very well. Also, another like little bugbear, but I think this is just the bugbear in life generally, is this type of mirrors. And while the mirrors themselves are pretty good, where they have the two bolts that sort of hold them onto the um, handlebar, and you start, you know, even if you're making a few little adjustments, the tenders to um, release themselves and all of a sudden you've got a mirror that's quite loose and you can't find the tools to fit. You know, it's just a pain. We had it on the last bike that we reviewed in the Motor Gutsy. They had the same type of um, wing mirrors. And yeah, just, a, just a, little, a little niggle, but it is a little niggle. So that's been the R9 T Pure from BMW. Absolutely love it. I'm personally a real fan. Um, I know everyone that's rode it um, as part of the team uh, and also Rick as well. He really liked it too. Uh, yeah, I think it's a fantastic bike. So look, hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please leave us a like, please leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel too. And look forward to seeing you on the next video.